The authors investigated the use of 3D models in the learning of facial trauma using a randomized controlled study. During medical school training, our study is very broad and many times abstract. When we are learning anatomy, for example, it is very helpful to have hands-on experience with cadavers to understand where everything is and to remember that in the long run. When we try to apply all of the anatomy knowledge that we have from the books to the clinical world, it is important for us to have an image in our head for that to make more sense. With that in mind, the authors wanted to compare the use of 2D versus 3D materials for the study of craniofacial trauma. Since the technology has advanced so much lately and the 3D printers are of easy access nowadays, why not use it to learn faster and better? Over 430 medical students were split in two groups and they were similar for demographics and academic accomplishments. Of note and interestingly, the authors also investigated and assessed for the use of video games and spatial skills for those students. After our pretest, the students were exposed to the different learning materials. We have been using models in plastic surgery for quite some time for different areas such as cleft, craniofacial, and microsurgery. Personally, as a craniofacial surgeon, I believe it's a lot easier to learn when we can analyze things in different dimensions, especially the bony structures. The way that I can draw on the 3D model and make the cuts to plan the operations, the way that I can feel how things should line up and come together, it just makes the operation easier since I can troubleshoot even before I start operating on the patient. So why not making the medical student's life simpler when learning about it, learning about craniofacial trauma? In addition, it doesn't really add that much cost because the printers now are of a relatively easy to purchase and cheap. So going back to the article, even though the authors did not assess for the student's satisfaction, I can only imagine that it's a lot more fun to learn with the technology. So not surprisingly, they found that the students who used the 3D models had a better understanding on the topic than those that had used the photos of the models. Maybe in the future, we can even try using 3D structures with soft tissue to make it more real. This is a super exciting area of medical education, and I'm very hopeful that we can start using widely soon. Thank you.